Welcome back. So today we are going to be talking Shrikes in the brand new F4 from Heatbler in DCS. Now, the Shrikes have been a pain in the ass for me. Uh, I To be fair, I, I've used them in the A4, and with the A4 I felt like they were really straightforward. You flip a few switches, you point the nose at the enemy, it gives you a tone, you fire, and sometimes they hit the target. And I went into this knowing that the Shrike is not the most accurate, the most reliable weapon platform in the world, and traditionally it did have a lot of problems, at least in real life. And on top of that, it also wasn't really explained all that well in the manual how to go about doing this. I think some of the bits and pieces are a little bit convoluted. So basically there are three ways that you can fire the Shrike. We're going to be highlighting two of them here because I haven't messed with the third. So the first function is the most simple and it's direct. And Basically, the way that direct works is you turn your your weapons knob on the left to direct, you turn your second knob on the right to arm, you highlight the stations that you want to use, uh, I set everything to nose tail just because I want to make sure that the missile is actually armed, I'm not sure if that's actually necessary, that might just be a bomb switch, and you flip the armament master arm on, and then you leave the uh, the missile reject switch in the middle position that's down on your console behind the stick, and you switch your sight to air to ground. And I know that sounds like a lot, but this is the Phantom. You're always going to have to do a lot, unfortunately. It's just the nature of an older plane. But with this setup, whenever you get radar feedback, you're going to get a tone, and it's going to vary from kind of a quiet ringing to a very loud ringing that you know will make you feel like your ears are about to fall off and basically that's dependent on how close your nose is to the radar source and it's not particularly precise not particularly accurate but it'll get you pointed in the right direction and the thing is, the AGM-45, even when we use the other mode later, it's really, in my opinion, a barrage weapon. It's not a precision weapon. At least not in the state that it is in right now. Um, the best way I've seen it put is this is not like a harm where you're going to go and destroy a SAM site. Like, it's not going to go and destroy enemy SAM sites. You're there to suppress them in a very literal sense. So, with that, initially, and I'm pretty sure I only included one clip of it, I rolled in pretty low because I was trying to avoid getting shot down, and, you know, I, I was probably too low. In my experience later on using the other mode, I found that firing the Shrikes below 2,000 feet usually resulted in them falling short and going into the ground. I'm sure that if you use them more, you can probably get a better idea of where to put your pipper, and you could probably do some like manual lofting, but just know that this is not a very precise method, and it's not the method that I would recommend using most of the time, but it is the easiest to set up and the easiest to do, and if you have like a high angle of attack, um, or like, you're, that's not really the right term. If, if you're coming in from a higher altitude and you're diving on a site, I think that you could probably make this work better. But if you're trying to do like a pop-up like you would with a heart, where you fly in, nose up, you fire it, you might get close, but it's not going to be the most reliable thing in the world. In a lot of ways, using these harps felt to me like using a rocket pod but, you know, with extra steps. Um, the second mode, though, and the much more important one, and the one that I want to highlight today, is the WRCS mode, which is the 
computed mode for using your harms. Now, in order to do it, you're going to have to switch between both seats. So you're going to set your selector knob on the left to AGM-45 for the Shrike. You're going to select all of your stations. You're going to set the right knob to arm. You're going to go down to the missile rejection switch between your knees uh, behind the stick, and you're going to set that to the down position, because what that switch is doing is it's either telling the missile to use the plane's information or to use the missile's information. And the missile is less accurate, and the whole point of this mode is to use the plane system. You're going to want to make sure that your master arm is on, that your sight is in air-to-ground mode, and you're going to then go to the back seat. And if you're like me and you haven't done anything with the back seat, you might have to look around a little bit, but there's going to be a panel to the right of your right thigh, and there's going to be a bunch of knobs on there. And on that panel, you need to turn the weapon selector switch. It'll, it'll have, like, delivery modes. It'll have, like, dive toss and loft and whatnot. You need to change it to AGM-45, and then you're going to want to put in your target's altitude, or, like, the elevation. And I'm pretty sure you can put in some other parameters into that computer to make it more accurate. I just don't know enough about the back seat yet to do that. And essentially, at that point, your plane is set up. So what that's going to do, is it's going to let you go back to your front seat. Whenever you're in range to start picking up these radar returns, you're going to have that loud ringing that you always do with, with the Shrikes. And in my opinion, from my experience doing this a few times, you can roll in for altitude you want, but when you're actually getting ready to release the missiles, you want to be between 2,000 and 6,000 feet. You could be higher, but I think the higher you go, the more you risk getting shot at. And you do need to be relatively close, and you want to be somewhere within 10 miles. My experience, 7 to 10 miles is around where I was firing most of the time, and I was having some success there. So the lower that I went, the more often the missiles would just go into the ground, and I found that the pull-up cues were more accurate when I was above that altitude. And so that's going to get us into the next phase. When you're actually rolling in, you're going to use your AOA indexers and they're going to tell you how to orient your plane. So if you've got the chevron on the bottom pointing up, then you need to nose up. If you've got the circle, then you're on pitch and you need to keep flying exactly the way you are. And if you've got the top chevron pointing down, Usually that's because you're too close to the target and it wants you to aim down. It's a very simple system. You basically just, once you're at, say, 2,500 feet, at 8 miles, you're going to hold your bomb release and you're going to follow that cue and just keep holding it until the missiles come off. And then the missiles are going to go and do their thing. And initially, having used these on the A4 a little bit and having used harms a lot on the other planes in the game i kind of thought that they would fly more towards you know the radar but in my experience it seems more like the plane is using the data from from the radar it's picking up with the data that you punch in in the back to kind of get a guesstimation of where the target is and instead of having the missiles actually home in on those radar sources it seems like it's just extrapolating target data based off of a combination of the information you put in the back and the information that the plane derives from the radar source that's coming in so like i said in my experience I think the best way to use them is to run all four of them, to roll in somewhere between two to 6,000 feet, fire them between seven and 10 miles, follow the pull-up cues, and then get the hell out of dodge before a missile comes and kills you. Admittedly, I wasn't super concerned with keeping my plane alive while I was doing this because every time that I ran out of missiles, I needed a new plane anyway, but this is how I got the best results. Um, I'm very much so open to feedback, though. I 
absolutely certain that my method is not perfect. I was not getting the results that I really wanted, and certainly not as consistently as I would have hoped for. Um, in some ways, I think that the strike is hamstrung by a limitation in how uh, SAM sites perform in DCS. Like, I think, ideally, the way that you would do this is you'd run, like, a, a multi-plane package, and you'd have, say, two F4s roll in with strikes and send them at the SAM sites. Ideally, that would get them to turn off their radar and, and like, go cold. And then you would have your other two F4s rolling in with rocket pods or with snake eyes or, you know, something to destroy these targets while they're being suppressed. The other thing is that this whole seed package on the F4, at least in the implementation it's in right now, is very predicated on having known target locations. It's not very conducive to pop-up threats. Like, you, you can definitely use it on pop-up threats, but it would work better if either Jester automatically threw the plane into the right mode in the back and you didn't have to switch back there, or if you're flying with a human Rio. Um, because I, it's kind of weird to me that when you set the front knob to AGM-45, he doesn't also do the same in the back. Uh, I'm sure that'll change with time, but... The other thing is you have to have a general idea of the elevation, so... In DCS, it's not hard to do, because e even if a pop-up threat does show up, and suddenly you realize, hey, there's Sam's like 15 miles off the right side of the plane, you can pop open the F-10 map, and you can kind of just mouse around and get like an average of what the elevation is in the area, and you punch that in back there. And I'm sure that you can figure out, like, if, if you actually are a backseater and you know what you're doing back there, I'm sure that you can figure out, like, what your advance is and all of that to put in the extra uh, data back there that might make it more accurate. And so you, you can adapt it to a pop-up threat, but there is a lot of setup that goes into this. So if you're just a solo pilot like many of us are, and you see Sam pop up somewhere to your right, and you don't actually know where it is, well, with the Shrike, you basically need to point the nose right at the target. It's it's not really going to do a whole lot if, um, if you're off to, like, the left or the right. I feel like it might be a limitation of the implementation of the Shrike, because, I, again, I've used it in the A4, and they do maneuver a little bit on the A4. It's just, it doesn't feel like they maneuver off of the F4. And I don't know if it's because they're not complete, or because I'm not doing it right, but... It probably takes you, like, 30 seconds to get the plane set up, so you, you could deal with a pop-up threat this way, it's just... It feels like it's designed for a pre-planned strike, and it feels like it needs other planes around it to support that. Because, again, it doesn't feel like I'm going to destroy a target with these, it feels like I'm just going to annoy it, or make them you know, take cover. And I guess theoretically you could bring four strikes and then you could bring some like rocket pods or some bombs and in theory you could roll up, fire your strikes and then pull like a loop, you know, like turn out like left or right and come back in behind them. And then maybe you'd be able to uh, dump your rocket pods into the area or do like a low pass with some snake eyes or something, and you might be able to deal with the site that way. I haven't tried that yet. I might try that later today. But my experience has been eh, a little bit hit and miss with the Shrikes. They don't quite do as much as I'd hoped, but at least there's something. So hopefully this helps you out a little bit. Uh, hopefully you understand what I'm talking about with this. Uh... If I find out how to use them better, I'll probably update this, or I'll put out another video. And I still have to play with the loft mode, but the loft mode seems like it's more or less going to be, like, direct, but, you know, with a loft. Um, which again seems like it's set up for more of a pre-planned strike. And as long as the, har the uh, strikes aren't really maneuvering a whole lot, 
I'm not sure how effective it's going to be. But, we'll see. Let me know if you've had more success with your strikes down below. I'm going to keep working with them and try to get better results. But we'll see. So far, the Phantom is awesome, though. It's been a joy to fly, and everything about it's really interesting. So, get out there, kick ass, take names, and win your games.